I'm going to talk on uh, learning or teaching surgery from internet. Uh, I feel a little bit embarrassed because most majority of my presentation I usually have uh, based on evidence-based medicine, on research data, papers, etc. Uh, and in this case I decided to do it a little bit different. I'm going to show my personal experience. So it's not evidence-based and uh, this is just my uh, personal thoughts I'm going to share with you. So I, I started my work 60 years, 16 years ago uh, in a place like this. I don't think, I don't mind, uh, it's, uh, it was a, an old hospital. I'm just showing you how this teaching and learning surgery, surgery looked, uh, meaning uh, it was learning by watching or teaching by showing. Uh, the surgeons were allowed to, the young surgeons were allowed to look what the older colleagues are doing. They were not allowed to do anything but just watching. Of course, you cannot learn surgery just by watching. It's the most practical uh, specialty in medicine. So you can imagine how difficult it was for young uh, surgeons who were often uh, very, very uh, sad uh, by doing nothing, just assisting and holding retractors. And I understood very early that uh, if I want to learn something, if I want to be more proficient, I need to do uh, something by myself. And I tried to find what I could do. As uh, in my department at the beginning, it has changed, uh, luckily. Uh, there was no uh, much teaching, in fact. So uh, it was the beginning on of 21st century and uh, there was not much in the internet uh, and of course most of the teaching uh, was uh, by courses, by uh, live courses uh, where surgeons had to uh, attend and of course uh, the biggest uh, problem what for Polish surgeons at least was the price for such a course. Uh, of course it didn't change. Uh, the prices are still very high uh, and we still cannot afford to go for all of them uh, because of money limitations. So I try to find something cheaper and perhaps uh, more accessible, more convenient. And I have found that uh, there are a lot of resources uh, in the internet uh, from which you can learn. Uh, many of them are exactly the same that were shown during these expensive uh, courses. Uh, of course, I attended these courses. I found money and I can compare uh, where are the differences. And uh, there are many very good uh, resources like this, for instance. That's one of the most uh, famous surgical anatomists. He has wonderful presentations. And uh, after seeing such a presentation, you feel you don't have to be live. You don't have to meet the person in, in person uh, because um, anything you want to see, you can see in his videos. Uh, so uh, this was very convenient, uh, of course, uh, and cheap. And uh, what is even more important, if you go to places uh, like a big uh, surgical clinics, want to see very uh, sophisticated cases. Sometimes you don't see everything. And here uh, in the internet you can watch videos of very rare cases like in this case. That's the uh, anatomic uh, anomaly of uh, a superior, superior mesenteric artery uh, which happens in around 1% of cases. So if you go somewhere, if you go to Heidelberg in Germany where they do a lot of pancreatic surgery, uh, there is a chance you won't see the case like this uh, just by visiting a place and not seeing it uh, uh, in other uh, resource. Uh, what I have learned, uh, I have learned that uh, thanks to uh, lectures and th thanks to online uh, presentations, you can uh, find uh, solutions for your problems uh, which are not uh, covered by uh, by many. Uh, this is the example. Um, that's another colorectal operations. There are many approaches to to resection, and uh, 
for some reason, uh, one of them are more, um, more uh, common, for other reasons they are less common. So finding a, a person who does it different uh, allows you to uh, improve your skills. And I have learned that any operation consists of small steps. And this is another thing that I, I want to emphasize that when uh, watching uh, anything on the internet, you don't have to uh, pay attention to entire procedure. You just watch what you need to see, what you need to learn. And uh, again, thanks to the internet, you can move forward, you can see some uh, uh, procedure once again and once again. And if you do it live, uh, it is often very difficult, despite a high volume uh, of, of procedures. Of course, now we have everything in the internet, all societies, surgical societies, medical societies are online. So now it sounds very obvious that uh, you are looking for resources uh, in the internet. You first look into the internet, then you look for, for something different. Uh, but there are many enthusiasts, I would call them uh, surgical uh, YouTubers, uh, that show their uh, videos uh, uh, in the internet. And this is for me the biggest resource of knowledge. Uh, of course, it's not practical manual knowledge. It's not evidence-based knowledge, but it's something that the surgeon needs, how to deal with the problem. Yeah? This is one of many very famous surgeons, very, very skilled surgeons, and that he shows his uh, procedures. What else? Uh, you can see videos like, like this, uh, where in addition to regular surgery, you have uh, animations, you have uh, pictures, which help less experienced surgeons to see uh, what they need to see. Because sometimes we are watching a video and we don't know what's, uh, what's going on. Uh, thanks to such animations, it gets much easier. Yeah? And another, uh, another very important thing is that many of the videos are edited. I mean, a surgery that lasts two, two hours is edited that it's only 12 minutes. Uh, it looks like a movie clip. And this is very difficult for a surgeon to find the details. Uh, therefore, I really appreciate videos that are unedited. Of course, it takes more time. Uh, to watch the full video. Of course, you can move forward if you need, but uh, it really shows exactly what you would see uh, when visiting a, a place and when looking at the surgeon's uh, life. And of course, there is another drawback of uh, video uh, in the internet, that the quality of many of them is uh, very low unfortunately. So uh, we cannot assess if we are not experienced, uh, if the surgery is being done correctly or wrong, that's the problem. And of course, there has been some debate what to do about that. And of course, there are papers, there are some guidelines, some, some statements, uh, how to improve the quality of the videos, what should be included uh, in the video. And I believe this really helps, but uh, it really depends on the surgeon uh, to, to distinguish the difference of a good and bad surgery. But I think that with experience you can, you can uh, get this, uh, this ability. Of course, uh, internet will not replace the uh, live uh, meetings. It will not replace the live uh, practical uh, workshops hands-on training like this. That's the picture from uh, Strasbourg where uh, one of the biggest centers uh, is located. Of course, uh, surgery requires hand practice and we cannot uh, replace it with internet, of course. Of course, uh, if internet will not replace the discussion, uh, that's the, the, uh, the content of the good uh, meeting where you can ask a question. And uh, of course, we, as a society of Polish surgeons, try to uh, improve and, and, and expand our uh, resources. Therefore, uh, we have a lot of initiatives uh, when we, where we transfer our videos, uh, our, uh, our surgeries to the internet, because still there are small hospitals in Poland where surgeons have limited access to uh, proper surgical uh, 
technique. Unfortunately, I know that from, from many source, resources. And uh, another very simple example, what you can find in the internet is the uh, informations of uh, departments that, uh, that just offer uh, the opportunity of visiting. This is how I uh, found uh, St. Mark's Hospital in London, where, where I spent some time. Uh, they were just offering observerships. If I didn't find it in the internet, I wouldn't go there uh, for sure. Another very good opportunity are the informations on fellowships. Uh, you can find them uh, in the society's uh, websites. And uh, that's another uh, example why we should use internet. Uh, and uh, Facebook, yeah, that's, that was uh, in the introduction. Uh, we found out that the level of Polish surgery is different. It differs uh, in clinical departments, uh, the university departments, uh, comparing to small hospitals. So we decided that we would like to create a platform for surgeons so that we can uh, uh, provide the access to good quality surgery, good quality knowledge, this, studies, research to all surgeons. And that was our idea. Uh, it was simple. We just created a, a Facebook group. It sounds very trivial, but uh, after Three months, we had like one one third of Polish surgeons uh, that that joined the group. Uh, even the surgeons that never used uh, Facebook again uh, before uh, to um, to get the access to what we are showing. And what we are showing, uh, we are showing anything uh, that is related to uh, surgery and to learning surgery. Anybody can ask a question. Uh, we just take care. The discussion is uh, polite. Anybody can uh, show a paper that is, in his opinion, uh, relevant to, the, to, to, to contemporary surgery. And of course, we publish a lot of movies, videos. Uh, we try to share the knowledge uh, among Polish, Polish surgeons. Uh, and of course, uh, we didn't do any study asking a pay, uh, these members if they, are, they like the group or not, but the feedback we get uh, is very positive. Uh, so uh, we hope that it helps somehow. Of course, it's not a new idea. Uh, uh, Americans did it long time uh, before us, and uh, we just uh, uh, repeat what was previously done. Another resource uh, of uh, videos. I focus on videos because I think that, that that's the most important part of um, surgical education in the internet, uh, are the um, libraries where you can find interesting cases. That's very, very convenient because if you're looking an answer to your particular question, how to remove a liver tumor, how to uh, do a colorectal operation, you probably are looking for uh, many similar videos in which uh, you can find your answer to, uh, to how to deal with the problem. Uh, of course, uh, here you have Endoscopic Association for um, European Surgery Library. There is a huge IRCAT library from Strasbourg. Uh, they have a lot of uh, free content. Of course, uh, there is also paid content, but uh, just using the free content uh, is enough uh, for a uh, beginning surgeon, so uh, nobody have to, has to pay for anything. And the last very important aspect are the complications. You can go to a place for two months, uh, leave your family uh, just to learn surgery, uh, believing that uh, you will find the answer to any problems that is associated with your visit. You can go to Heidelberg like I was, and uh, you can see a lot, you can learn a lot, but for some reason, you won't see everything. And uh, everything, to me, to a, to, to a surgeon, means also complications, which occur sometimes often, sometimes more often, sometimes less, less often, but they, they occur. And uh, thanks to internet, you can find complications and solutions to complications that are very, very rare. Here I'm showing my complication of uh, bleeding from a Mm, celiac trunk. Uh, it's a difficult situation in laparoscopic surgery because you have arterial bleeding and uh, 
I record all my procedures uh, so that I have content, I have uh, material I can show. And this is something that occurred only once in our department. So uh, perhaps uh, if somebody visited us, he wouldn't see it uh, again. Uh, thanks to uh, this video, I had like perhaps 2000 visits. Uh, so uh, probably 2,000 surgeons could see how I deal with these complications. So uh, this, this is beneficial. And of course, internet will not replace live conferences where you meet, where you can chat, where you can uh, find some cooperation. Uh, but many of these live conferences are more or less transferred, transformed to uh, video sessions, which are in fact the same as in the internet. So even if it's live, it still starts resembling uh, the internet for some reason. So in summary, I could say that with the internet, you will never walk around. And uh, thanks to internet, you can improve your skills, uh, not just by watching, but also by, by uh, feeling safer. Thank you very much. Uh, Michal, thank you very much uh, for uh, an interesting lecture. And actually, we have questions. Thank you. Uh, so the question uh, is, uh, what about finances? How should those videos be financed? financed? Uh, should the professional society um, take part in, you know, creating content costs money uh, or time? What, what's your feeling about that? Um, at least in Poland, this is not financed by, by anybody. So this is mainly done by enthusiasts who have time to see, like me, their videos, their operations once again. Sometimes it takes longer to edit a video than to do a, an operation. Uh, and uh, of course it should be financed. <laughs> Uh, I think that uh, it would provide better quality. It would encourage people to, to do it uh, more often. Uh, and of course, I think that there are bodies like the societies that could spend some money on, on such uh, activity. So we have one more question. Congratulations. Uh, are videos uh, a part of course requirements uh, to fulfill by students to get a credit? So that's, I guess it is a question about pre-grad education. Uh, Graduate. I, not yet, and I don't know if it's a good idea. I mean, uh, it can be a good idea to show a student the basics, uh, but uh, uh, Perhaps because I'm a surgeon, I think more like a surgeon, meaning that I focus more on postgraduate education, uh, which involves more advanced procedures, which involves more uh, uh, precise items. But of course, uh, sometimes we, we would like to show students uh, some clinical scenarios and including these videos into a clinical scenario would add to reality of the scenario, why not? Uh, sometimes we cannot uh, let all students enter the operating theater to see the, the procedure with the video, it is not needed. Yeah, we just require the, uh, the, the computer and the, the somebody who would uh, discuss what, uh, what they can see. So, uh, it is beneficial, I think, and uh, perhaps in the future we'll have it in our curriculum. The question was about the requirement. So it's not required, but we think it could be of some, yeah. of some use. The last question is, with the availability of all those online resources, do you think formal surgical education should change in some way? What do you mean? Well, I mean that, uh, for example, uh, there are requirements to visit different departments. You go somewhere for a week, you barely see anything, there is hardly any benefit. Uh, watching videos for a week could change a lot. Do you think that we should somehow incorporate uh, distant learning uh, in any form, like distant mentorship, uh, uh, online training, 
uh, in formal surgical education? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, the, the pandemic has uh, led us to, to implement many distant uh, methods of, of learning and teaching. And I've, we've been doing this for two years already. Uh, so uh, it's very convenient. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.